And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. We're back after a week off. Um, sorry, everybody, but we had some things come up and we, we couldn't do the thing. But now we're doing the thing and we have Tom. I'm I'm here. Uh, although right now um, I've decided to become Irk for a day. Oh, yeah. Damn it. I was, I was going to be Irk. Yeah. Irk's camera's not showing oh, up in Irk. Discord, so I'm having Oh, uh... oh, I'm so sorry. So um, I think this is the point where we can tell everyone I don't know how IT works. And when trying to start my task manager, I accidentally he signed, signed out. out. Oh, we have double Tom. That's good. I'm, I'm refresh going to, the. There uh, we go. There it is. I, I'm going to repeat a joke I already oh, made no, it didn't uh, fix. That, I, that I stole from Twitter. Um, Irk out here carrying it up. He was oh to speak my to God. the task manager no. and accidentally signed out. I wish, uh, hang on. You can do it. You have the power to mute him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to get um, OBS to actually recognize that Discord window. It still just has two Tom. Toms, which I'm sure Tom is thrilled about. But Yeah, this, this works. Um, but the I'm world not going to say not. that. It's just straight up not <laughs> looking at Discord. Give me a second. So anyways... Uh, how's your guys' weeks been? Uh, kind of busy, actually. Yeah, like a good busy. Like I feel like I got a whole lot done. I had a very productive week. Um, and I've got a three-day weekend, so all good things. Um, yeah. The only downside is I really didn't play a whole lot of games. Really, just two. I'm I'm getting to that point. Like, have you ever put a shit ton of time into one game? And you're right at the end. Like you can see the finish line there we go. and you just can't play anything else. Cause it takes away from, from the time you could be spending rounding it out and just finishing the game and being done with it for a while. That's where I'm at with cyberpunk 2077. I just rounded out like 63 hours. I think is where I'm at. I've done most of the side content that, that I have access to. Um, I'm starting to do like more of the story missions, which is unlocking more side content. Like I I'm just spidering my way through this game, but I can see the end in sight and it's going to happen soon. So pretty soon I'll have more games to talk about other than cyberpunk 2077. Nice. My week's been good, Adam. Hey, nice. That nice. was all right. I turned a year older this week. My birthday was Thursday. So I am awful with now, people's birthdays. Happy birthday. Thanks. So now I'm 31 and my tags are expired. So it's going well so far. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to be fair, I've seen people drive around with temporary license for like the last six months. So I think you're okay with the tag, man. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, not, Tom, I, I had the complete, or not the complete opposite, but um, you only had the three day weekend. I did the uh, pro strat of taking off the Friday to make it a four day. Gotta uh, love that. Gotta love that. Love the four Use one, get four. I, I burned a whole lot of vacation days last year um, doing nothing because, you know, interesting times. Uh, but uh, I am saving up my vacation days because hopefully, maybe, if the world returns to a semblance of its former self, I would like to go places and travel on vacation. So I'm uh, I'm taking a, a couple of vacation days and you know holding those close to the vest as it were. All right. Yeah, I I took some last year, not a whole lot. Um, so I rolled over a good bit. Most of what I did, I was able to still work while I did it. That's cool that so you I, get them rolled over. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm one of the lucky ones that get the whole rollover of PTO. So I abuse, I don't want to say abuse it. It's not right, but I use it. I mean, you know, that's, that's part of the thing is that, uh, you know, uh, some people I've talked to in, in kind of these, these bigger jobs, the, the big boy jobs, as it were, um, are just like, Oh, I don't want to take vacation. I feel so lazy. It's like, nah, motherfucker. You that's work. part of it's part of you your compensation package. Yeah, that's part of your paycheck. <laughs> literally... Dude, use it or fucking lose it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and so, part, uh, of, yeah. part of what ours is, is part of it is you lose it. Yeah, because, yeah. like, there's, there's some state of Washington stuff out here involved. So we're like, hey, if you don't actually use this, you're capped and tough shit. You just lost it. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So if you got vacation days and you're not using those, uh, get the fuck on it. It's part of your paycheck. Go <laughs> use it and uh, sit around in your underwear. Like you don't even have to do anything. Don't be productive. Just like watch I... watch The Office for the ninth time. <laughs> Why put on underwear? Agreed. I had I had yeah. like two weeks off at the end of the year, and I don't think I got anything productive done the entire Good. two weeks. <laughs> was hey, dude, dude, you grinded the fuck out of Tarkov. I did. I played a lot of Tarkov. <laughs> That's productive. Um, it's it's been kind of productive actually. I'm making some good progress. I think you are too. Yeah, this is the farthest I've ever been. Though, okay, I'm gonna get a little story tell time with Tarkov. Um, I was on a hard mission that was blocking me out from a lot of other shit where you have to kill five of a certain faction of actual human players to the point where I would say by Thursday, I had 4 million in my economy by Sunday. I couldn't even afford 17,000 ruble things. Like I drained my <laughs> entire economy. It was painful the amount of grind I was trying to do. But thanks to Adam and Brian, got that shit done. Nice. Got it done. You had like one kill left. You needed one more guy of that faction. It was two. It was two. Yeah, it was two. And we kept playing over and over again on like the the highest concentration PvP map. And like, yeah. you just like die every time or, and then you'd get some kills, but they were all the other faction. Oh, <laughs> just, yeah. It was just like... Just couldn't catch a break, and then we finally we played a match with Brian, and Irk got both of those kills in the same raid at the beginning of the raid. So yeah, it was a, it was a double kill to start the fucking raid. It's like, hold on. So you're telling me when I'm trying to do this shit, I kill everything else under the sun, and when I say fuck it, it happens. Yep. And they were both the right faction and everything. Irk's like, oh, okay. There's a guy here. Oh, there's actually two. I'm uh, shooting one. He's dead. Second one's dead. Oh, I got the test on! Yeah, <laughs> We're just and so, then there was celebration, so and then yeah. Brian and there was got much kind of rejoicing. Up. Yay! I've I've got a question with that. So Tarkov, you can like as a player, you can choose your loadout, you can choose your gear. There's not like red team, blue team. You can instantly tell what faction this person's a part of, right? Uh, so, no. Do you just kill I mean, somebody and hope for the best? Really good well, players. Well, there's no team. Yeah, it's not yeah, team. Yeah, I mean, it's not team, but like. Do you just kill somebody and hope they're the right faction and you get the I end mean, screen? You're like, oh shit, I guess I didn't count. I mean, either way, you're going to kill a player that you see. Yeah, so you're not going to not, not like, kill them choosing which one. They're bare. Well, I mean, yeah. maybe because like if I were faced with, okay, I've got limited resources. I, uh, I'm clearly having, you know, a bad time. I don't have a whole lot of health to expend. Maybe I sneak around instead of just popping shots, but. If I see the guy's part of the objective I'm going for, mm, changes the calculus so, a little bit. Th I mean, there's nothing super obvious, but if you know the game well and you know the different like clothing outfits, like certain, uh, certain like shirts or pants are only available for each. Like each faction has different sets of clothings that players can choose from. Okay. That are exclusive, but it's not super but, obvious. But like, because it's underneath the armor and the backpack straps and the tactical rig and the hell. Like, yeah, you basically okay. just have to be able to recognize the sleeves of the shirt they're wearing <laughs> if it's a uh, identifiably one or the one or the other faction. That sounds kind of annoying. Like, I appreciate it. And I really appreciate Tarkov's commitment to to detail and dare I say realism at the expense of everything else, but. It doesn't seem very player friendly to me to base a quest around something so arbitrary. Most of the quests are pretty arbitrary, honestly. That's true. But it's something to progress. Like, like I, I like that they're there. But like, if you read the dialogue on some of the quest givers, like they'll actually call out. Like one of them talks about all these damn tourists in here at my mall right now. So how about we take? Like they'll refer to yeah. like different factions in different ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is some lore, so, and I know that they're one, once the game is done, they're wanting to lean way more heavily into the lore and the story and stuff. But so like you have like clearly USEC based kind of dealers, and then you have clearly bear based kind of dealers. 
and you can tell by their wares which way they lean. So I mean, it's it's definitely going to end up in lore. So it feels arbitrary, but at the same time, it's fine. It, it fits Tarkov. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. And because yeah. it's hard, it feels good when you finish it. Mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> and I guess you could tell somebody's faction if they decide to use what I would deem to be one of the more useless uh, features in that game, which is press a button to uh, to give a voice line. Oh, 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 oh no, okay. no, no, no. Th oh, that can dog. be useful. We're talking. Yeah, we're right, talking yeah. now. Tell me, tell me why that's a thing. You're in okay. Discord. You're talking to people. Why on earth would I break stealth to to okay. what is it? Cheeky. There breaking? are okay. Here it comes. I there got are... I got an actual okay. an actual story for this because I got wrecked by it. This motherfucker killed me. So I'm walking by a building and I'm being really stealthy because I got my fucking quest item. So I went out and then I just walked by this open door. I didn't see anything and I'm like, okay, no big deal. All of a sudden, I hear a calm. I'm like, well, shit, there's a scav in there. I'll go get the scav real quick. All of a sudden, motherfucker, while I'm just listening to hear where he stands, peeks the corner, pops me right in the face. Oh, An what? actual human player called or used his calm to draw my oh, attention to pull sneaky. me back. That's sneaky as fuck. That is rude and uncalled for, and god damn, I love it. That is... <laughs> evil <laughs> they they are right, occasionally right. they are occasionally used um so there's a content creator slash streamer he does a lot of daisy too but he's known in tarkov as well and he uses those things a lot like one just as like a stream entertainment thing like he's got them all bound to his f keys for certain ones so he'll like you know all, they're all like pre-canned things like Ooh. you know taking cover or enemy spotted or enemy down or hold your fire or, you know, hey, you want to team up or whatever? So he'll, like, make it a point to use them to make the stream entertaining. And then he'll actually try to find players to be friendly with and team up. So he'll actually Ooh. say, like, hold your fire. Hold your fire. And if they respond, they can start to initiate a small amount of trust, you know, pop around the corner without your gun pointing, you know, and, and look at them and see if they're going to trust each other. And he's got a whole series on YouTube called Battle Buddies. It's like 300 videos of him just teaming okay. up with random people in Tarkov. And sometimes it'll be like, uh, usually, you know, he'll come in, you know, full gear, whatever. And he'll he'll find a, a guy that's just like, he doesn't, he didn't bring any gear in. You know, he's like the poor player that doesn't want to risk the little bit he has. So he's just going in with like his little hatchet trying to find stuff and, and not bother anybody. <laughs> so he'll find somebody like that and hold your fire and... And they'll wiggle back and forth, and and he'll like guide them around the map and like point out the loot spots, like here, loot this, and protect them a little bit, and kill a guy, and here, loot this guy, <laughs> and they make their way, and and that's really nice. dangerous to do in a game like Tarkov because it's so easy to just get betrayed. Ooh. You know, top ten yep. anime betrayals. Team up <laughs> with this guy the whole the whole raid. You get to the extract, and then he pops you last minute. You know, well, that's, that's something that can happen. That reminds me of um, one of the first stories I saw of GTA V's multiplayer. I think this circulated on like Twitter or Tumblr or Reddit or something, where there was a brand new player, and you could tell from their gear they had nothing. So this guy guided them around the map. They went to like the roller coasters. He showed them a bunch of cool spots. They explored the map together. And at the end of the, the day, they sat and they watched the sunset together. And just so the guy knew what he was getting into with Grand Theft Auto V, he ended the day with shooting the guy in the back of the head while oh. he was unaware watching the sunset. Oh, And, my God. you know, in Grand Theft Auto, there's nothing more beautiful than that. Making a friend, enjoying a day, and then killing them completely needlessly. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> so, beautiful. It's just very GTA. beautiful. I don't think I've ever used it though, like the voice comps. I I, I used them I a little bit in, the last way, not very successfully. I do the like the mumble one a lot, where you, they just say random things. No, 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 um, just like yeah, just because. You can use it too to like, hey, where are you? And then you say a voice line so that they can hear where you are instead of like having to shoot your gun or something. Okay. That, that yeah, could be I can see uh, that. for sound localization. Oh, true. You did that actually for me today. Yep. But yeah. Um, Tarkov. It is what Tarkov. it's been. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they've been making constant little small changes. Uh, it's been really good. Also, I want to call this out real quick. GameSpot has a video series of a gun expert breaking down Tarkov weapons. It is Ooh. actually a really interesting video. News or like surprise to no one, they did a really good job modeling these weapons. Nice. Like this guy, at one point, he's like, I think it's redundant and tiresome for me to keep saying they did a good job here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever go back and look at the guns in GoldenEye 64? Where there's there's literally one like one ammo type, it's just a box. <laughs> and to reload the gun, like goes down and comes back up. It doesn't matter if you have a rocket launcher, a pistol, or an AK. The gun just drops out of view and then comes back up with full ammo. Everything takes the same amount of time to reload. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, the, the gun system in Tarkov being it what it is has forced me to learn about actual gun parts. So <laughs> <laughs> like I don't I went down a YouTube rabbit hole and I ended up on this like channel for like super hardcore into guns people <laughs> and like he's showing off this gun with the attachments and stuff and i'm like oh yeah that's an eotech hollow sight and uh with the uh, you know whatever <laughs> hk416 like i know the a lot of the parts even though i'm not a gun person at all it's just funny i uh i actually had to do that uh as well in pavlov oh because i didn't know how to reload the the lmg um like I, it's it's a pretty especially if you're if you're used to pressing a button and watching somebody reload a gun in a video game it's entirely different doing it in vr because you have to physically reload the guns mm-hmm. so i watched a guy reload an lmg in youtube and i'm like oh oh i gotta lift the thing and then slap the box and then drag the the ribbon cable of bullets i don't i don't know <laughs> the drag cable. that over and then slam the thing down and then prime. Okay, this is how you do it. Um, but it was kind of a weird feeling to watch real world skills and then apply that to a video game. It was kind of odd. So yeah, yeah, now I know how to load an LMG in Pavlov and apparently in real life without of course all the weight and the fiddliness you get with actual mechanical weaponry. Um, but you know, I know, I know what should happen. (laughs) And who wants to deal with feeding a belt in like that? Oh, Jesus. No, that sounds like just the worst kind of fucking annoyance. Uh, well, Adam, actually there is something I do want to ask you about because you started playing a game that I know Tom and I have enjoyed the shit out of so far. Yeah. You've talked about it the last couple of weeks, actually courtesy of Tom. Thanks for the birthday present. You got me Hades. Cheers. So what you think? Um, so I played it, I've really just played it for just today, so I've played probably over an hour, probably two hours or so. Um, I, I like it. It's good. Um, I think the way I feel about it kind of mimics every, everything you guys have been talking about the past couple of weeks with it. Um, it's just got really nice, satisfying combat. I like that it's, it's pretty simple, but there's just enough depth to keep it interesting and then it just responds well. Like there's... There's a certain degree of button mashing I can do, but there's also like actually c- controlling and, and doing things purposefully. Um, Dude, if you play with the shield, you can just do nothing but button mash runs if you yeah. want. I love the shield. I was actually fully expecting the shield to be my most hated weapon in uh, in Hades. I was expecting uh-huh. you know, something slow and really uh, just really boring to use and defense heavy. Nah. No, it's straight up Captain no, America. I was, yeah, that's exactly what it, it reminded is, me of too. It is just a beat down weapon. But no, I'm um, I'm finding that it, at first I was worried I wasn't gonna like it that much. Um, but it does a really good job of introducing new things at just the right pace that keeps you wanting to play. And and no matter you know if you die or how long you play, there's there's always something that is changing enough to keep it interesting. Um, if it's not yeah. just the the dialogue options and what the people say to you in between runs, it's um, okay. I died, but I collected enough of those things to buy a couple of upgrades, or you know, picking the keys to get the new the new weapons. And I like that the the occasional time that you can choose which door to 
to go out of into the next room. It'll show you like what the little reward is at the end of that room. Ooh. So you can kind of tailor um, where you're going based on what kind of items you want to receive. So that's cool. Yeah, and especially when you keep going with the same god over and over, eventually you'll get things like, well, you're going to do um, lightning damage with your mm -hmm. um, weapon. And then eventually, as you keep going to him, eventually, like, well, you know what? Your lightning damage now does chain lightning. Yeah, and like, which, by the way, that is my favorite thing so far is all the lightning stuff. I had a really good run with the, um, you know, what? I can't even remember which, which weapon I had. It might have just been the regular sword. Um, but I had the chain lightning, and then I had the the item or whatever that you hold that lets you do your dash twice mm -hmm. per thing. And then I got an item that makes a lightning strike wherever if I'm close to an enemy when I dash, it strikes them with lightning. So I'm doing like double dash plus an attack and just like destroying <laughs> these these enemies. Um, it was really fun. It was, it's cool to see those abilities kind of string together in a useful way. And there, there's just enough choice in how you want to do your upgrades. Like you always have three things to choose from pretty much. And I, and I like that. I want to force myself to run a cast one time because I've never found the casting useful outside of damage multiplication. Oh, I, I cast hard. I build some hard cast builds and hmm. they're a shit ton of fun. Like everything from spinning blades to throwing down bombs that leave like poison behind, it's it's always a good time. And I also like yeah, the there's almost no tutorial for anything at all, which surprised me. And I'm usually bad about learning new systems and stuff in games. Like usually at the very beginning of a game, all that stuff is just overwhelming to me because it, I have a hard time keeping track of everything and memorizing all the little ins and outs of everything, but they do a really good job of somehow not having any tutorial at all, but you know what everything does pretty well, like a little bit at a time as it goes. It, it, it introduced new things at just the right pace that I think is really um, both engaging and accessible. They had the training dummy though, so you at least would be able to understand yeah. the different means of attack. Yeah, Skelly is my boy. He to do He's stuff. my favorite character so far. Yes, I love Skelly. Skelly is so Skelly cool. Skelly is great. I'm I'm gonna have to give a shout out to Cerberus though. Cerberus is the goodest boy. He's a good boy. Is he? I like that you can pet him. He's he probably not a good boy. You. Oh, I don't, I didn't get that far. Oh, the furthest it. I've gotten so far, um, I died to the first boss like three times, and then I mm. beat the first boss on the fourth run, and then I got to like the second whatever area and died with all the lava i i love how much they make dying a part of the gameplay yeah, yeah. it's important it's like in that roguelite sense of oh hey you're gonna die a whole lot but yeah you, you die and you get a story segment out of it like mm -hmm. you're, you're supposed to it's the gameplay and the narrative are tied at the hip and it's just goddamn impressive well, and that's where I really want to know what happens if you beat the game. I mean, I haven't beat it yet, but what happens if you beat it on your very first run? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. You I might I'm miss sure out on stuff. I don't know. <laughs> knowing, knowing Super Giant, I'm sure they'd, ha they'd have to build in responses to that, right? Like, they I'm can't sure, just yeah. ignore it. Well, and they can't just like, oh, we're not going to let you win. Yeah. No, they, no, they would. That would be kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. I'd but no, it's good. It's good. Um, roguelike games are, I mean, they all kind of do this, but in Hades especially, um, it, it's nice to have that sense of progression outside of dying because in in most, even in most roguelikes, it's, there's a little bit of that, ah, crap, I died. Now I have to start all over. Mm -hmm. But with Hades, yeah. it's, ah, crap, I died. But, you know, I'm still progressing, if not, in the with like items and things but also in the story it yeah. feels like it's less of a blow to have to start over because it, there's a, a greater sense of progression even when you do have to start over there's no, almost no, anticipate. No, my keys. yeah there's almost a sense of anticipation when you die what's going to happen when i get back yeah is there going to yeah, be a sort story of. beat is mm -hmm. there going to be a cool thing in the shop i can get a hold of yeah 
it's, I, it yeah, really good. I enjoyable. Like not even just in, uh, expected, but like I don't actually mind when I died because I've never died to just bullshit. It's always yeah, I didn't I got greedy or I didn't play that real well or man, that guy's hard. I maybe maybe I've got the wrong talent tree to do this right now. Maybe I could try building it like this next time. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I will say this. Eventually, you'll get to a point, Adam, where you can only have like certain boons on an item. So if you already have a boon there, if a god offers you another one, it's a swap. So to oh. remove your current one, dude, you can wreck a good run if you accidentally swap. <laughs> Let me tell you what. <laughs> Because like that. as you've probably seen, you can build some really sweet synergies based off of just one boon, and everything else synergizes off of that. Mm -hmm. And then if you uh, pull that boon, everything else goes to fucking waste. Wow. But yeah. So yeah, Hades um, is good. The only thing I, I mean, if I had to pick something I didn't like about it, other than a couple of the enemies are kind of annoying, but I guess that's more of a, a challenge you have to deal with in the game not necessarily that it's a bad part of the game but i was actually i kind of don't love the the art style really i'm really not into it no wow. okay it, re it it reminds me i think it's just because of the camera angle plus the like sort of cell shaded thing it just reminds me of like a moba or something like league of legends art style and, and also including like the menus and the fonts and things like that like it reminds me of either like a MOBA or like a like that mobile game menu style sort of. Not that it's bad. I'm just it's just not really my thing. But the gameplay and everything is is really good. And and that being said, the art style is really well executed. Like they did a really they put a lot of care into the visual style, the animations and the music and everything. It's just not like it's not my favorite part of the game. It's not your jam. Not my jam as much. But the gameplay, you know, more than makes up for it so far. I'm, I'm really enjoying it, actually. Fair. I, just I haven't really that. found anything I dislike about Hades. I guess, I guess the thing, my main complaint is mouse and keyboard controls are far, far, far inferior to controller controls. I was going to ask you guys if you play keyboard or not, because I was... Yeah, no, the, controller. Okay. The only thing exactly. I can imagine being nicer with the keyboard is the air, the bow and arrow. Yeah. I noticed that was a little bit cumbersome with the controller. When I play the game, it's controller in hand, and I just kick back and chill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to have another game like that. And I was surprised playing today, too, because I, I got to a point where I was like, okay, I've checked it out for a little bit. I'll probably quit soon. But I kept finding myself doing another run <laughs> and like kind of getting into, <laughs> into that, like, uh, just like, one more. Yeah, yeah. The, the just one more. Got to keep going to see what's better. next and what changes. And oh well, if I do one more run, I'll have an, enough keys to try out one of the new weapons. And oh well, shit, I got to see what that weapon does. Yeah, I have to beat this boss. I want to see the next area. <coughs> and yeah, dude. you know, it's not going to take that long. It's just one run, right? Right. Exactly. And again, and again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Hades is cool. I like it. Good deal. Yeah, it's it's a fucking solid game. Glad I, I thought you would like it, but it's also different than any of the roguelites I've played. Mm -hmm. To where I just wasn't sure because it definitely like you you called it out. It has a hack and slash feel to it, mm -hmm. very much so. Which so, yeah. that that's one of the parts I like about it. We're good. All right, Tom. You're 80 Tom. hours into Cyberpunk. <laughs> no, no. I'm 63 hours into Cyberpunk. Surpassing 80 hours? No. I'm surpassing what the 60 fuck? hours. Oh, I wrote 80 because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom right embellishes right the show 60. notes. That's yeah, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm running out 60 hours. I'm, I'm at like 63 right now. All right. Jesus. So... Are you still enjoying it as much now as you did when you first started? Uh, no, hard no. Um, I am enjoying it way, way more than when I first started. I, I've actually okay. gotten more fond on the game, even with the bugs, even with even fucking today, meaning to restart a quest because 
apparently the trigger to open a goddamn garage door so I could drive the fuck away didn't properly trigger on whatever I was doing at the time. So I had to reload my save and I lost a whole three minutes Oh no! in my car and I drive out <laughs> quickly before the thing shuts behind me because God knows if it's going to fucking open again. But even with the bugs, even with the annoyances, I'm loving it even more. Um, the characters that I'm interacting with, the quest lines that I'm doing are getting just better. They're aging like a goddamn fine wine. I like <laughs> spending time with these people. I like the dialogue. I like being a snarky asshole. It's just, <laughs> it's just great. Um, like e today there was, there was a quest where I had to go pick somebody up in a car and I, I thought, Hmm, if I'm going to pick some, this person up in this car, given their history with these characters, I'm going to pick this car. Cause it's got just, just a little bit of an emotional attachment to, uh, to their storyline so far. And when I picked them up, like I just did that as part of my personal role playing. I wasn't expecting anything from this, but when I picked them up, I grabbed them. We did the, the quest dialogue of cool. We're going to go do this stuff. I'm being intentionally vague to avoid spoilers, by the way. Yeah. We're going to go do this stuff and talk to these people. But as they were getting in, they're like, wait, is this so-and-so's car? The one from this thing that happened in my own history? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Shit, I know that's what you're talking great. about. Yeah. And I, I was just sitting there like, oh, my God. I didn't actually expect the game to, to respond to my actions. Like, this is CD Projekt Red at their finest with quest design and writing. And it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it feels special. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have had quests where, in, again... Witcher 3 fashion where there's no good answer and I've got to do some hard thinking and still even still there's a quest line today where I don't know if I did the right thing when I play through the game again I'm going to pick the other option because I just gotta know I just have to know I'm, I don't yeah. save scum my way through the vast majority of quests I stick to my guns even if I'm royally fucking something um, and it's been fantastic. But who's to say there is a good or a right answer though? There's not. Yeah, and that, that's, that's I, love, I love. Yeah. I, I love that about the writing. Like in the Witcher, like Witcher one, two, and three, there are there are quests that are clearly, you know, do you do you want to be a good guy or a bad guy? But most of the mm -hmm. quest in the Witcher three was, hey. Here's a variety of shades of gray. Which ones you want to explore today? Because you're not getting out of this well. No one's getting out of this alive. How do you want to slice this? Yeah. Um, and Cyberpunk has a lot of those. Um, like there was a quest where there there was a guy being just I I'm gonna say morally reprehensible. Like we're talking predator, like predatory levels of Jesus Christ, this is fucked up. I, I found the guy um, and he begged for his life. So I put away my pistol and I got up my shotgun and I took his head off. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's was, the answer I was looking for. <laughs> it was great. It was fucking great. I loved it, every piece of it. And when I got back to the quest giver, they're just like, so what did you do? I was like, well, I took his head off and they said, Good. He got what was coming to him. I'm glad you were there. I'm like, yeah, me too. Fuck that guy. <laughs> uh, and it was it was great. And as the game has been progressing, as I've been getting more and more into these quests, the writing is getting better and better as time goes on. I don't know if that's because I'm getting more attached to the characters mm -hmm. or if it's just that the writing is actually better in the later parts of the game. But uh yeah, the side quests are some of my favorite moments in an open world game of all time. I am, I am just goddamn happy. I I really liked the character development of a specific character that I don't want to say to spoil anything. Mm. Um, but there's some really cool character development that I appreciated a lot. Yeah, is this a character that you start out hating and you're like Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah, get off yep, your goddamn yeah. high horse already, yep, 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 yep. and at the end of it, you're fist bumping and yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It created a really cool dynamic with and in context with the story and what it means for the characters and stuff. Like, I, I really, really liked that aspect of it. That was my yeah. favorite part. What's cool is that the game, 
uh, without going into spoiler territory, the game actually asks you at certain parts, would you like to lose your agency? Like as a gamer, the, the thing the thing that video games give you is agency. How do you want to approach this situation? How do you want to experience this? And the game straight up asks you, hey, you know the thing that's the most important in video games, which is your choice and your say and what happens to you? You, you want to go without that for a hot minute? And the story gives you perfectly valid reasons on why you might do that and completely valid reasons of why you might not want to do that and where you just don't want to see these things happen. I decided to give up some agency. I saw where it went. I did like the results, but I can I can see the argument where you say, no, fuck no. I don't trust you, fuck no. And why on earth would I do this, fuck no? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm... Uh, not only am I loving cyberpunk, but I, I think I am growing fonder the more time I spend with it. Um, it's... I cannot call it a well-made game. It is an extremely well-written game, and I cannot wait to play it again in a year when the vast majority of this bullshit is fixed. I haven't played it in two weeks. Ah, oh, like it, I'm Eric. You're becoming me. You're starting really good games and then not finishing them or continuing the to play intro them. of the like the starting ten hours of the game. I don't. Unless you get to a certain part of the story, unless you get to act two in the story, it doesn't yeah. have that hook, mm -hmm. right? Once you get to act two, the claws are sunk in and you're not getting away for a little bit. At least that's how it was for me. But before that time, I could take it or leave it because it just felt pretty generic. I want to get back to it. I felt the characters were well written. It's just... Given the other things I've been playing and how much I've been enjoying them, cyberpunk wasn't doing enough for me to say you know what these two other games you're playing a lot of and really enjoying how about you play less of them and play this game that's buggy as shit you're having issues with and you just kind of like the writing or just putting up with the bullshit to get there yeah, i totally get that's it. fair i yeah. cannot disagree so i mean i will get back with it this is a game i will finish just because it actually it's written well enough where i want to see what they do with the story but as the current, it's just, nah, man. There's other stuff I'm doing instead. This game also has me, um... I So, when I play RPGs, I am usually the goddamn fucking Boy Scout. I am, I am a <laughs> Catholic nun. I am just the paragon of all that is good in the world, and I won't ever say a rude thing. Cyberpunk had me punch a quest giver after a quest. Like, I got the option of saying, I understand what you did and why you did it. I walked up and I fucking socked the dude. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to shoot me. I punched the guy in the <laughs> face. And I said, fuck you, man. That was fucked up. And you put me in a bad situation. Go fuck yourself. You're lucky your boss is here. I'd lay you out. It is one of the only RPGs to turn me into an asshole. And I really <laughs> appreciate that. I enjoy playing an asshole in RPGs. You're gonna like, play I mean, Cyberpunk. You get so many opportunities to just be a cock waffle. <laughs> I mean, like, in, my God, what the fuck was that? Cheers. <laughs> a cock waffle? I said it. That's a new one. Yep. But no, Add like, that in this world, the mine, old list. Like, I've killed some old folks to get medicine. I've done all sorts of. We like, I'm not opposed to doing that shit. But I, I do like having the agency of you don't have to be goody two-shoes. Yeah. I usually like, fall into no. the Tom Tom realm of making sure all the characters think I'm a cool dude. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's... I, I'm trying to be good for the most part. But somebody said, hey, um, I just did something really evil. And completely morally reprehensible. Can you help me get out of it? I was just like, ah. no. I guess so far in the story, <laughs> I've done way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Let me help you roll up these hookers into a carpet and dump them in the river. That's not what happened. But that's basically the equivalent of what I did in the quest. What happened to the call girls? 
Oh, nothing. Nothing <laughs> at all. Uh, trust me. The call girls are squarely on my side, and I will risk my life to defend them and have. You missed your chance for you a missed quote, the Archer Tom. thing. Yeah. 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 I don't. I haven't. They're hookers when they're Archer. dead. Yeah, that's true. She's not a hooker. No. She's a call girl. She takes pride in her work. <laughs> uh, first season of Archer was so good. I haven't seen Archer in forever. Probably a year and a half or two years. Did that show um, go downhill over time? I don't think it went it's, downhill. Okay. It did get pretty but, samey. Well, it got... Oh. Huh. It got they, they, until Archer Vice. And then it got weird. After Vice, it gets even weirder. Okay. Archer Dreamland. I've never seen that. Um, Spoiler, he's... In a, I won't go there. Yeah, yeah. They, it's weird. It's weird. But um, I, do, I do have to say, Bob's Burgers plus Archer, the crossover episode, was goddamn hilarious in context now that i've seen bob's burgers bob's burgers is fucking excellent yeah it is it, but um archer is one of those shows that i enjoy but i don't like to watch alone it is absolutely to be watched with a group yeah things are just funnier in a group oh yeah yeah but i mean even some funny things like i enjoy watching aqua Teen alone i don't okay. enjoy watching archer alone I'll put on Bob's Burgers in the background when I'm alone, but it's not, I won't sit down and like watch it. It's always while I'm doing something else. Like if I'm doing dishes, sure, prop my phone up, put on Bob's Burgers, put on Archer, whatever, and just sit it there. But I, I don't think I've ever like sat down expressly to watch Bob's Burgers while I'm alone. Oh, I have many, many, many times. <laughs> Like it took self control for me not to watch the episode or the season that Gene and I haven't watched by myself. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's taking a lot of self control to keep me from watching all of Letterkenny by myself. It is Renee and I's like lunchtime and dinner time TV. I am getting deep into that show and it is fucking hilarious. Such a good show. I, it really is. That's I'm one that has to grow on it. you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah, like, I watched it, a hand like a really small, like maybe four episodes. Yeah, uh, you it's, like, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. The guy talks kind of annoying. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Really <laughs> Once you start watching it, it is a super fucking quotable show, and you'll be quoting yeah. it a lot. Oh my god, Renee hates my guts so much right now. I mean, I've already heard some of the common quotes from it, and I like them enough to use them a couple times having not even really seen that episode of the show but yeah i, I agree but I, I i super dig the show it's really weird seeing him in other shit though he's in other shit <laughs> yeah he's a cop in some show or something that would weird me out i know right he should be working <laughs> on a farm yeah pitter patter yes let's get Love out of it you get anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. Where the fuck you? are we? Getting you. All right, let's talk instant coffee. So, Irk, you've always told me, "Nah, instant coffee's great. It's fine. It's whatever." Yep. And I have always fucking hated instant coffee. I've tried a lot of them. Like G Seven is kind of the brand I went to because I tried the Folgers shit. I tried. Like the Nestle shit, nah, nah, it's all bad. G7 is fine, but the issue is I open that packet and literally everything smells like coffee for the next two weeks. Like my hands, it just kind of goes everywhere throughout me. <laughs> um, I did a little bit of research, and, and I want to stress a little bit, and I found Jacob's. It's a German brand of instant coffee, and uh, Jesus Christ, it tastes like just a regular old cup of coffee. It's not going to blow your mind. Like, it's not the best coffee I've had, but I literally cannot tell the difference between a cup of this and, like, a cup of shitty diner coffee or, like, Dunkin' like Donuts Waffle House coffee, coffee or something? Exactly. Like, it just tastes like coffee. Coffee. It doesn't taste like instant. It just tastes straight up like coffee. And I am loving the shit out of this. I've been drinking this since Friday. It's fantastic. That one cup? 
You're going to get yes, through it. Yes, the one shot. It's uh, <laughs> going to take me a little bit. Uh, but no, so Jacobs, you can buy them online. Uh, I, I'm i loving this stuff. It's great. No milk, no sugar, no additives, just literally a spoonful of this stuff, some boiling water on top, stir it up, you're done. I, I'll be doing the same. However, I don't think you should use boiling water. Well, I believe just like regular coffee, it will scorch. Yeah. yeah. Slightly under boiling. Um, oh, um, also, you can make some really good iced coffee with this stuff. I put it in a uh, a glass with a lid, shake it up, some some milk, some sugar, you're done. Hmm. I'm going to have to look into that because There's... I am often in a hurry in the morning. <laughs> and it would be nice to just get that Throw caffeine some water in the microwave. <laughs> Grab a spoon and stir. That's it. Yeah. It's really good. I enjoy it. Again, not the best cup of coffee I've ever had, but I it's instant coffee that you can't tell is instant, which is probably the highest praise I can give it. How much uh, something anyone I, could give instant coffee? Yeah. How much was that There's canister? There's something I saw. So, I got uh I got two of these. I lied to Eric. I got two of these for 25. <sighs> yep. Our kid's mad because I gave him a gift. Can we get a big old fuck you, Irk, except the gift in chat. Thank you. You're the fucking worst. But no, there is something I've been meaning to try. I saw today where it's a uh, meaning to try. I saw today. That doesn't make sense. Anyway. To try, um, saw today. That you saw today. It's, it's a um, drink that takes like, uh, you take instant espresso. I'm sure instant coffee works just as fine. Um, sugar. Um, I believe some cinnamon and maybe a little something else. And you make kind of a thick kind of like peanut buttery paste out of it. And then you float it on top of milk. Oh, that, uh, and Dal- drink it. Dalgona coffee or whatever. Yeah. Hmm. It looks interesting and I want to try it. Sounds good. I'm all about cinnamon and everything. I wish cinnamon were alongside salt and pepper. That's how much I love cinnamon. That's a little extreme for my liking, but I do enjoy I, cinnamon. I put cinnamon in everything. My favorite part of going to Panera Bread is that they've got all the coffee stuff, but they've got a thing of cinnamon. Nice. I never understood that. Like, Starbucks does that too. Is it really common to put cinnamon in your coffee? I don't know, but I do it, and I love it every time. Hmm. It just seems weird, and they have nutmeg too. Some and places like, it's I common. I love me a good... Go ahead. Nutmeg. I say I love me a good pumpkin and everything, but I don't need a nutmeg shaker. Yeah, I I can understand if you want to get the uh, kind of those Christmas flavors in your coffee. Nutmeg makes sense. Not really into it myself, but I could see it. I'm a big fan yeah. of cinnamon. Did did you guys ever when you were a kid? Did your parents ever make you? It's literally just a piece of buttered toast with cinnamon and sugar sprinkled on it. Yes, so yeah. good. I love that Great. so much. <laughs> we actually had a shaker that was powdered sugar and cinnamon in it. Like right, it was man. a uh, like you would mix it and it just shake it on the butter toast. Nice. So good. Let me tell you about my absolute favorite breakfast growing up as a kid and I still have it today at the risk of my own health. <laughs> All right. You make some toast. On the toast, you put peanut butter. Crunchy, smooth, doesn't matter. Um, Then you cover that shit in maple syrup. Mm. It is Mm. diabetes in a meal, and it is goddamn delicious. Yep, I'm going to make it tomorrow. Those are the flavors I like right there. (laughs) Uh, You should should try it. Toast, peanut butter, syrup. That's it. You should sprinkle a little cinnamon on that and see how that goes. Ooh, that would be good. Although I don't know cinnamon with the richness of the peanut butter and like the, that's just too much sweet, but I don't, yeah, it might work. It's worth yeah. a try. Cinnamon so might something I would always, sweetness. Something I would always do as a kid is just straight butter toast, fold it in half and dip it in hot chocolate. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's weird. I wouldn't have thought I to do that. Shit out of it. I don't know why I ever thought to do that. Like my dad would do that with sweet tea, like hot sweet tea. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, it, so Comrade Bunny is calling out the proportions. It's like a cup of peanut butter for two pieces of bread and a cup of <laughs> like, okay. That's it? I, I'm not going to lie. 
I I use Americanized proportions for all of my meals, which is why I'm the size I am. I uh, enjoy folks, some peanut butter. Enjoy yeah. a healthy lifestyle of uh, of moderation. I am definitely eat peanut butter straight out of the jar kind of guy. <laughs> when I make a peanut oh, butter yeah. sandwich, I'll uh, when the, when I'm done and I got enough peanut butter on my sandwich, I'll take the knife. And I'll scoop out a big of a fucking glob as peanut butter as possible and then just shove that straight into my mouth. Hell yes. Dude, it's peanut butter. Peanut butter is the best shit in the world. Don't think I'm weird, but I started putting my peanut butter in the fridge. And for uh, just you like... Use natural? Well, I did, and that's why I started doing that. But then now when I buy not natural peanut butter, I still put it in the fridge. Oh. And there's something about just like cooled down peanut butter and then when you use not natural peanut butter and you refrigerate it the the texture is almost like it's almost chewable like it becomes a little more solid and Ooh. for some reason i actually enjoy that just take a spoonful of that it's almost like being uh peanut butter fudge kind of thing sort of yeah not that you know it's not that dense and, uh, but... i'm gonna have to try that though Here's a little bit of public Tom relationship history now that it's hit the chat. So y'all get this. Uh, yeah, like probably the first week Renee and I were dating. Um, I made her that and then forgot to give her something to drink because I was being a little nervous. Kind of an asshole. Didn't mean to be. <laughs> so yeah, all that peanut butter, nothing to drink. Can't do it. Serve this shit with a big old glass of milk. Okay, now hold on a second. So within the first week, you're making her something. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Your go-to was peanut butter <laughs> toast with maple syrup on it. Yep. You see, uh, with Talk Renee, that's a statement. So, so okay. <laughs> Here's the background. I'm gonna go into the whole background. I decided when I was dating Renee that I was I was done with dating bullshit. I was done with the I'm gonna piss around and make myself look better than I am. And I'm going to lie. Cause that's all you do in relationships is you lie and hope somebody likes you enough that they get Stockholm syndrome. And like, and a, you can a lie a little of, bit uh, less over time. Exactly. Like it's a, it's a gambler's <laughs> fallacy. They're like, well, I'm, I'm already here. So I guess I'll stick around now. Instead, I decided to go full Seinfeld, the summer of George. And I decided I am going to be 100% honest with who I am with this person. I'm not going to lie an ounce. And in a, in mealtime, that translated to, here's the worst thing I've ever put in my body. Here you go. <laughs> this is me. And uh, we're still married. And she was like, oh, yeah, it's actually pretty good. Well, she's <laughs> more like, <laughs> I get water. Water. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Complete just Raw honesty. Really? You're lucky. So far it works. Good God, that's a killer. Well, I mean... <laughs> not not the honesty. The fucking me. Eric has such a hard time being honest, man. It really takes it out of him. <laughs> the, the way I figure it, she's either going to find out who I am later, and I've now wasted both of our times, or mm -hmm. she can find out who I am early on in the process and just rip it off like a bandit if it's not going to work. Fuck well, it, she man. probably saw your diet. It's like, well, if I marry him, I know the life insurance policy is going to happen soon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's oh, that's shit. actually good, though. I wish more people were like that. I think it could do a lot of people a lot of good. Yeah, I, it worked for me. I'm not about to tell other people how to live their life, but oh well, uh, yeah, I've seen success so far. Right. Uh, maybe she hates me, and I don't know. Maybe she's not being honest. Tom, yeah. everyone hates you. I mean, that's I never the that. question. I get it's that. In an, it's in an acceptable amount of hate. <laughs> well, how much is an acceptable amount of hate? A lot. Okay. A lot. No, anyway. Um. So I don't think I have any other games to really talk about. I did Dota, EFT, and Hades. Nothing notable. I've got um, one thing to say about Dota. We've been doing uh, four and five stacks recently, which is like a full team minus one and then a full team in Dota. I feel like we're we're finally starting to gel. Like, you know, with any any team and group that you regularly play together with, you kind of got to get those flavors to know each other a little bit. You got to go full babish on it and, uh, and just wait for things to come together. 
I feel like that's finally happening with our Dota play. We're finally getting on each other's radars. We know what we expect and what we need and, and things like a team fight or farming or stacking camps. Like we understand that, you know, when Irk says something, this is what he means. And when Scott says something, this is exactly what he needs to happen for, for us to be successful. Not that we're great or that we're functioning perfectly, but it's finally coming together. And I, that's, Kind of my favorite part of the process, honestly, is is being able to jump into a game, craft a theory, and test it out together without a bunch of the, oh shit, I thought you were doing this thing and I really needed this thing. Just yeah, like, I've, it's I've... like a beautiful relationship built on peanut butter toast. <laughs> that sounds awful. But no, um, the five stacks have been really fun, um, especially because since you're the entire team, you can kind of get your strategy out ahead of time because when there's randoms, you don't know what they're going to do. So they could be choosing a role, like unlike rocket league and rocket league, everything's fluid. Everyone plays everything. Dota is more like the idea of, let's say you have an actual full-time goalie. Mm -hmm. When you're picking your heroes, you don't know who's going to be that full-time goalie. So if you have randoms, they might do it. They might not. So you have to kind of wait and see what they do. But when you have a full team, you know exactly what everyone's going to do so you can pick accordingly. Yeah. So instead of hedging like, well, I might pick a hero that could do a few different things in case, you can pick heroes that are specialized in doing exactly what they need to do, which is and very fun and very nice. During a game when, like, let's say somebody's having a bad time. Let's say that, you know, uh, even, even today, there was a lane where... We were doing, two of us were doing really well. We, we had a really good lineup against the people we were facing, and we were just wrecking shit. And the other two people were having a less good time, where things kind of sucked. And we were able to say, okay, well, because we're having a great time and you're having a bad time, we're going to do these things and position ourselves this way to try to make up some of that lost ground. So we're able to kind of intelligently move ourselves and, and do things to pick up the slack a little bit. And then we saw it a rando, so it eventually fell apart, but it helped. It got us way further than it would have without it. Yes, absolutely. Ah, but Dota, the Dota. game I love to hate. Fuck <laughs> Dota. So I'll probably play some later. But I absolutely will. That, that's my plans for postcast is more Dota. So yeah. Um, Anything else said? Um, news time? Anyone have anything else? No. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and get some news. Uh, we're going to start with something both Tom and I missed somehow. Um, Hitman 3 is going to be an epic exclusive. And it's being explored, but this might mean that Hitman 2 levels are no longer going to be free on the game. So um, we're going to have to keep an eye open because right now Epic is investigating what they can do which means it's probably a licensing issue, but the levels might not be free the way that they initially had intended them to be. So let's fingers crossed because more levels on Hitman is always good because those levels, one level adds so much replayability in that kind of a game. So yep. this might actually push me to wait for the Steam release. If they can't figure something out, I will not buy the game until I can get everything in one package because that's... It's kind of a dream for me is to get all of those levels on the new game and have one thing that I can launch to play like the past, what, eight years, six years of Hitman content. I, I would love that. And if I, I don't want to have to rebuy all that stuff because I, I did buy it and I, I yeah. bought it fairly early on. Like it wasn't it wasn't cheap. Um, And I, I keep buying the DLC on Steam. So like if I can't get everything in one game, I'm just going to wait. Now, that said, Epic has hooked into Steam before to pull over like friends lists and stuff like that. So could they figure something out with the library and maybe like giving you the game if you've already like giving you Hitman 1 and 2 content in the DLC if you already have it on Steam? That's kind of the, the dream for me. If they can do that, I'll absolutely buy it on Epic. No, that'll problem, come, that's no issues. That'll come down to will Steam play ball? Because uh, that's going to be an interesting one of, hey, Steam, will you actually let us get library details on users? Right. If you can, it's not up to Steam, though. So it's up to IDOS, right? It's up to 
the license holders of the game, not necessarily Steam. No, no, no. Personal library. Steam would be ha have the ultimate say on that. Yes. Like yes. It's the access to see if it happens. Right. That's that's what I was getting at. Because that that's a kind of a jump of faith for Steam of, you know what? You're our competitor, but it's better for the customer if we let you have this data. And keep in mind that the, the game dev could do something else that's, uh, that's interesting. They could say, hey, when you launch your game, uh, go over here to the options menu to get an Epic code. Right, because you launch the game, you get an epic code to go plug it into that platform and unlock the game for free. A buy one, unlock anywhere sort of system. So there are ways around this, and I, I I'm really hoping, and I kind of expect them to figure this out before launch. But if they don't, man, that's uh, that's downright unfortunate. Yeah. Um, also, so before I we move on from Epic, Slugger did call out yeah. Star Wars Battlefront Two is free on there. I That's wanted a to, good yeah, game. I wanted to call that out, and I need to download that because I didn't know that. That is a good game that got fucked with microtransactions, but did get fixed post release. Yeah, I remember playing the beta, and fuck the star fighting in that game was so fun. It was, and it eventually was turned into squadrons, but yeah, I enjoyed my time playing the game. I'll, I'll yeah, put it that way. yeah. I never bought the full thing because, as you said, the microtransactions just fucked it all. Um, but the gameplay itself was solid. I will say this. If people are around Discord saying, hey, we're jumping in some Battlefield, if I'm not mid-match at Dota, I might join. Yeah. Because that is a Maybe. really fun game. The way Battlefront plays is pretty unique for a shooter. It's a good time. So if you don't have it, go get it. It's free. It's one of the better free games they've had on their store. All right. Got that uh, Speaking there. of... Uh, EA no longer has exclusive rights to the Star Wars license. As a matter of fact, what it looks like is uh, they're not going to be making many more Star Wars games because um, it's not LucasArts, but it's the closest thing we have to them. Uh, Lucasfilm Games is now a thing. And uh, as the name implies, they're going to be building Star Wars games. Uh, looks like the first thing they're tackling is a big-ass open-world Star Wars game, which sounds just nutty to me. I'm excited. Uh, LucasArts is one of my favorite dev houses back in the day, and not to say that they're the same thing, but I hope that they can carry that torch just as well. Uh, so I'm looking the, forward to it. The one thing I am would... Okay, so I'm going to go a couple different ways here. The good thing about LucasArts... or Sorry, Lucas Games getting this is the fact that the canon of Star Wars is so good. I've been getting into it a lot more. I've been talking to Tom a shit ton about that. And if they are the one making the game, I think there's a really good chance that you start getting more of the side stories that people really enjoyed. Mm. Like, let's be honest, most people didn't know who the fuck Ahsoka Katana was until Mandalorian, me included. Like, I didn't watch Clone Wars until then. If they can start exploring some of these really well-built characters in the games that get ignored by other publishers, that could be really fucking cool. This is going to sound weird. I think Star Wars is at its worst when it is dealing with the Force, when it's dealing with Jedis, when it's dealing with fucking space wizards. I think that it's Star Wars at its laziest. The world, the world building, and just, just the aesthetic of Star Wars is fantastic when they're telling stories that don't revolve around stupid bullshit like that. You know why I think the first season of The Mandalorian worked so well? It's because it didn't have any fucking stupid space wizard shit. It was just a bounty hunter doing bounty hunter things, and it was great. The space wizard stuff works very well when it's done in a way where it's... It's the, hard to The space this. wizard I, stuff is cool in the sense that the, the action choreography and stuff is really interesting. Like those, like yeah. the battle scenes and stuff are, are really cool. I think the live action battle scenes look like garbage personally. Like uh, lightsaber duels, I think in person look awful. I don't know, man. Duel of the Fates, like that, that last battle that, of episode one is iconic. Yeah. And that um that song, or not song, but da, 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 that da, da, piece. Da, 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 da. Yes, that is yeah. one of the coolest movie soundtrack pieces ever, I think. Oh, it's and I'm not iconic. even a Star Wars guy. Ten out of ten. But yeah, um, I, I think that the 
even the Jedi stuff can be done well when it's done in the way of lore and where they don't feel like fucking juggernauts. Yeah, I can agree with that. Have it be and, have it be like a flavor on top. Have it be an additive or a garnish, but like if I have to play one more goddamn Star Wars game where oh you weren't you weren't murdered by the the child killer that became Darth Vader and uh, I scored that that was a good shot. <laughs> no, I I think uh, um, that they need there's other areas to explore and that's yeah. where I think that if they do it themselves there will be other areas. It won't be well. What happened when, you know, they went to this? No, it's going to be new shit, new stories, not rehashing of the shit everyone knows. Mm -hmm. I want to play a game as a, a shittier, like, underpowered version of Han Solo. I want to roam the galaxy smuggling shit and shooting people for fun. That's what I want in the Star Wars universe. Like, I don't want to play Outer, <laughs> outer Worlds. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I, I think there's a whole lot of potential there that's left on the table because... People think Star Wars and you got to hold a lightsaber and zap people with force lightning. And that's mm -hmm. that's like five percent of the universe has been beaten down into a bloody stump. I don't want it anymore. I, there's way more to Star Wars than just the fucking Jedi. Either, the Star just, Wars world is, I think, a good setting for an open world game. Yeah, you've got multiple planets with, uh, you know, iconic and diverse uh, terrains and stuff and you know multiple factions and groups of of people and stuff like it's, it's just a really good setting i think for an open world game and there's so many different timelines you can choose that have different things you can do like you could even do something like breath of or not breath of the wild holy shit like ocarina of time where there's some time skipping elements to it where one planet like you could see geonosis like pre uh trade federation bullshit then you can see geonosis during empire see geonosis post empire mm -hmm. and see all the differences on a planet and play through that kind of shit could be fucking awesome I, i'm gonna read slugger's comment verbatim because I, I think he hits a nail on the head here the mandalorian is basically taking a video game that is built off of useless side quests and making it into a live action show yeah and you know what i love it so much so Did much you know, one of my favorite episodes of The Mandalorian was uh, them defending that village, right? Like, did it have any giant impact to the main, like, through storyline? No. But it was great to see. It was a self-contained little, like, hour-long vignette of the Star Wars universe. I love See, I... If you like that, why didn't you like Clone Wars? Clone like you bounce off Clone Wars when it was nothing but small vignettes. Because I saw I saw the first three episodes and it looked like Cartoon Network bullshit. <laughs> nah, man, it gets so fucking good. The last four episodes of Clone Wars are better than any movie in the entire series. I I keep hearing that and I need to get back to it, but god damn, like if I have to hear one more. And this is the moral of the story as told by Nickelodeon, said by Yoda. <laughs> I'm going to fucking hang myself. And Rebels is just as good. Hopefully. Like, I, I've, I've, story bullshit. I, I've come to realize that those cartoons weren't made for kids. Those cartoons are legit Star Wars. Okay. Slugger, I, I didn't like the first three episodes of Clone Wars because it, it just... It wasn't pretentious enough for Tom to enjoy. It was too kiddy. It was there, there wasn't like, stuff underneath that you had to think about. Like okay, so I compare <laughs> this guy compare, compare a uh, a children's yeah. show that I love to pieces, and it, it's probably my desert island TV show, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Right, the first three episodes of that are solid. Yeah, they're it's aimed at kids, but it's solid. The first three episodes of Clone Wars that I saw was the worst kind of a Star Wars wrapped up in a package for consumption by children and that's it like there was no thought put into it that's what i haven't liked and that's why i bounced off of it so hard i didn't see anything good in those first three episodes those guys hit their stride because of clone wars like mandalorian won't happen wouldn't happen without clone wars i'm telling you you gotta watch that shit okay i i will get back to it i will have you guys I seen probably. any of the making of Mandalorian stuff? Like, have you yeah. seen the technology behind their sets and stuff? So cool. That is one so, of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. 
there was there was a really cool scene. I don't remember who was doing it, but they were playing. It wasn't a scene. It was just behind the scene bullshit. They rigged up the little baby Yoda, and the dude was <laughs> playing the guitar next to acoustic guitar next to the baby Yoda, and the baby Yoda was jamming out to it. Like they had the moving in rhythm with what he was playing. <laughs> it was so fucking cool. I need to respond to one more one more comment. Uh, the Legend of Korra is some of the worst television I have ever seen in my entire life. Fuck everything about Korra. Everything. <laughs> I watched it once and I would never watch it again. You couldn't pay me to watch it again. Tom, always on the fence as usual. Mm. Yep. O- always, um, always, you know, taking well thought out statements and being very, you know, balanced in his responses. <laughs> I never said, I, I, I am the Jedi or the Sith. I'm not going to take a middle ground on Korra. And that is fucking terrible. It took everything good about Avatar in that universe and just shat on it. Uh, all, right. all right. Anyway, let's get on to the last little bit of news we got. Um, actually, it's actually the last thing we got. Um, Nintendo is buying longtime Canadian partner Next Level Games. Tom, you added it. Talk to it because I really didn't get a chance to read this one. Uh, so they've been doing uh, Luigi's Mansion is the thing they're they're most known for. And... They have built good stuff. Um, it's cool. They're they're gonna get lots of funding. They're brought into Nintendo now. There's there's nothing that says, "Hey, we think you make good Nintendo games," like being bought by goddamn Nintendo. Uh, so good on you, Next Level Games. You uh, you put in the work and you earned it. Yeah. Um. So maybe Luigi's Mansion Four in 2022. Who knows? Oh, I'm sure. I but- love Luigi's Mansion, by the way. I think that is that is an underrated, child-friendly survival horror game. <laughs> I've never played a single one outside it, of the one at Dave and Buster's. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, like it's it's not gonna scare you, but if you wanted to give kids something like Resident Evil but child safe, it works, and it works way better than I expected it to. Hmm. I got I, it. I, I, my GameCube. I know Gene is a fan, and the third one's out on Switch, and at some point we will get that used from GameStop because, yes, we do go to GameStop because used games are so much cheaper. But, um, yeah, at some point. I'll only buy used digital copies. <laughs> Fucking Tom. Um, with that, uh, anyone have anything else to get out of here with? Uh, I have just a quick question for you guys. Yeah. Are there any games you guys are looking forward to that haven't released yet? Hmm. At this current time, uh, I'm gonna I mean, answer for Irk. Horizon Zero Dawn two or Horizon. Uh, what's the new subtitle? Whatever subtitle. Yeah. I don't know the subtitle, but you know what? No, there's something else I'm even more anticipating. Hmm. Halo Infinite. Oh yeah. I want that. I want that bad. I'm afraid of Horizon Zero Dawn. I don't know what they're going to do with the game. I feel that a sequel was shoehorned in, so I'm scared. It's one of That's those fair. things where I'm really worried the sequel's just going to be complete dog shit. Tom? <sighs> yes. I am looking forward to the graphical Steam release of Dwarf Fortress because maybe maybe the game will be accessible enough that I can play it without needing to spend PhD levels of uh, of study and involvement to understand how to play that goddamn game. The game does seem like it would be so much fun if you understood the fucking systems and how it exactly. was Exactly. It's just, it's so, the barrier to entry is so high. And there was a point in my life where I could and would put in the time to do something like that. Not anymore. Oh, no. No, it's an unrealistic barrier to entry for players. Like, you can't anticipate players actually going through and doing that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, what's it called? Fucking Space sim- or space Truck Simulator. Um, Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous has a little bit of that, but they combated that by, in-game, linking you to YouTube tutorials. Mm-hmm. Like they do a lot of stuff to understand, like explaining, like we know this shit's complex. Here's where you learn. Uh, what are you, Adam? Can I, throw, can I throw Hitman Three on there too? Yeah, it didn't have to be just one. I was just curious. 
Um, I've actually, at? I've actually got four, and two of them I forgot about until Slugger said something in the chat about them. Uh, Little Nightmares Two. Looking forward to that. There's actually a free demo on Steam that I need to check Ooh. out for that. Um, Hellblade Two. That's another another thing. Uh, Resident Evil Eight Village, which I think they're doing a presentation for this week. Um, I can't remember what day, like the 20th or the 24th, one of the two. And there's a game called The Medium. Um, it's developed by Bloober Team, but it it's very Silent Hill inspired. And oh. they're doing this thing where, and, and it's kind of like a, I'm worried it's just kind of like a gimmicky technology thing. But the game takes place in like two alternate worlds that they will occasionally show at the same time, like split screen. Ooh. Where like there's the regular world and then your your character has like psychic powers and stuff and you can tap into the whatever weird altered demonic world. And there are there are sections where there's varying degrees of split screen, sometimes more focused on one, like, you know, two thirds of the screen or whatever, and sometimes half and half and then sometimes one or the other. Um, but that could lead into some interesting puzzle stuff and I thought it was interesting that it was split screen. Um, but it looks very Silent Hill inspired, uh, all the way down to the like static cameras and that kind of thing. Hmm. And the the music is done by the guy that did all the Silent Hill music, so that could be awesome too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that soundtrack. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so I'm, I'm um, kind of uh, cautiously looking forward to it because they did release like 15 minutes of gameplay, and it wasn't like. It didn't wow me or anything, but I'm hoping the the game ends up being cool. And I think it's gonna be on Game Pass like day one. Ooh, so that's I not nice. play that. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna play it 100. percent So I don't remember so, when it comes uh, out. So Boogie's calling out Elder Scrolls Six. Have I missed that announcement? Or are we gonna get um, bamboozled and it's gonna be Skyrim again? They announced it. <laughs> they announced a JPEG of it, and that's that's basically all the information we have so far. So it's like Age of Empires four. Yeah, it's it's coming. They're working on it, uh, and that's that's all the information we've got. And okay. I'll actually add that to my list. If that comes out this year, that'll probably be one of the games I play the most. I'm gonna... not not Elder Scrolls, Age of Empires four. Mm. Love me, Age been... of Empires. You know we're we're gonna buy Elder Scrolls Six, and that I will no long I won't be married for the next year. It's basically what that's gonna boil down to. <laughs> I will I will lose my wife to the Elder Scrolls. And then you took an arrow to the knee. Yeah. No. Um. All right. Um. If that's it, I think we'll call it there. Um. For those of you watching us on Twitch, thank you. Uh, we have a YouTube, uh, 72 pin connector over there. We put our podcast, our plays of day montage, other random stuff. Go check it out sometime. Um, if you're over there watching us, thank you. But the best way to consume this podcast is to go to twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector live every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Come be part of the chat, sniper lobbies. Just it's a good old time. Uh, we have a Discord. Link is found on our website, our Twitch, multiple places. And as reference, we have a website, 72pinconnector.com. 72 Get all of our content right there, right at your fingertips. Super easy to remember. Um, With that, I don't think we have anything else to discuss. So unless you guys got something, I'm good. Um. Nope. Jacobs and so coffee. Yeah, good. Jacobs. All right. Well, all I said, till next week. Came on. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>